Let's see. Exciting. Hey, everybody. Look who I have with me today. Uh, I have wanted to talk to these three um, for a while uh, since this story on Days of Our Lives launched. But with me is daytime Emmy winner James Reynolds, who you know is Abe Carver, the man. Yes. The amazing Kim Coles, who is killing it as Nurse Whitley. Yes, she's here. Yes. <laughs> and back from when he was eight years old, <laughs> Terrell <laughs> Reynolds Jr. Thank you. As thank Jerry. You. <laughs> Jerry. No one's ever gone from Days of Our Lives. You know? We know him. We know. We know he was original Theo. Little Theo. Yes. He was little Theo. So guys, yes. thank you so much for being here. I have to just say, you know when you see Soap Dish or all these play on soap operas and you say, if somebody says to me like, well, explain to me what the story is. And I go, okay, well, the guy's got amnesia and then the nurse kidnapped him. And then the guy who thought he was Theo is not really Theo. He's playing another part and he's really the thing. It's like one of those things where if you're doing a comedy act, Kim, right? Like you're, this would be like trying to tell somebody what's going on. So I want to know when you each, when you got the script and they said, Kim, you're coming to the show. What did they pitch you? And did you have any idea it was all this that we, I did. I had an inkling, you know, they don't tell you everything when I, I actually, they called me to audition and I, I actually hired a coach to get me ready for this. I've never done a soap before. It's a whole other world. Here's what I was told. Um, remember the movie uh, Misery with Kathy Bates and J James Caan? You will be Kathy Bates. I was like, and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was light. And, you know, they did explain that there's a, 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 psych a psychological break a, a, of some kind and they couldn't reveal all the details. But I knew of the overarching arch. And I was like, I'm in because I'm in. Yeah. Right. And had you seen Kathy Bates in Misery? Oh, it's just it's one of my favorite movies. Too, one right? of my cock a -doody. come on it's the beauty all time. i know you told us not to curse but i can't say cock a, -doody. Cock -a -doody's okay i fell in love with her in that movie and the you know the the ups and the downs and you know of course this moves so much faster but uh, you know in in you know daytime television it moves faster than a movie in my mind but uh i just i love that and i love the you know the break and the uh, that I get to torture this wonderful man. <laughs> I feel so bad about you it. You wanted to break my ankle. I know. I'm just like uh, <laughs> Kathy Bates. The here. ankle coming I up. I wanted to hobble <laughs> you. I wanted to hobble you. So this is softer, gentler. And then I didn't know about the other storyline that I was going to hire this guy to be. Um, I didn't read the scripts in advance because I wanted it to unfold for me. So when I met this Jerry character, it was just it just got better and better. And and were you explained that this was little Theo grown up now with like the casting stunt of it? I just thought it was the sweetest thing to to do that. Not so not only does, does this actor get to reprise his role, not only uh do does the audience get to fall in love with him again, like we remember you, we love you, welcome back. And as an actor, yep. think that you could you know, move on and advance in your years. I mean, because Terrell is a thousand years old now, but like, a thousand. Like, <laughs> old I can't believe what happened. happened. <laughs> it speaks volumes to how good he must have been, and 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 how wh what a family this show <laughs> is. That I that I discovered that they would go looking for him to bring him back. I just thought that it, it made it warmed my heart. James, were you not when they told you they were bringing Terrell back? Oh, what what did what happened? What did you I think? I was so that? happy. And I, I, I was so happy. One, I was curious what he was going to look like. Oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> a decade and a half later, what do you look like, Terrell? And he just looks wonderful and great. And he's just such a, you know, but he, he was a, he was a great kid. He's a great man. And and uh, I was so, so very happy to see him. As I was when Kim showed up. You know, we we realized that we had known each other before so it, it's just it was a homecoming okay but james you get the script and you're like okay he has amnesia like are, were you clear on what was going on or were you confused at some point like what is going on and how am i supposed to play this because there's no I, I, I knew what was going on yeah and i played it you know you have to um you know some of it you have to play in the moment because it's happening in the moment you don't really 
remember anything. So you can't pull on that. There are a couple of moments that I, uh, I think I may have made a mistake or two because the, uh, the character, I'm not going to tell you what they are, but uh, <laughs> the, mistake. Okay. the character, you know, had several different things going on from this, um, this bonk on the head. And so to maintain that and keep that, and actually even now, just to preview, not to give any story away, but uh, it doesn't get his memory back. Uh, it, it, you know, as we are speaking, he still doesn't know, he still doesn't, can't remember anything. He's aware now because people are telling him what his life was like and he's meeting people and all of that sort of thing. But uh, there's still little little sprouts of things going on from that story. Terrell, Terrell. So you come back, so you get a phone call. Like what happens? And they explain to you, you're not really playing Theo, but you are like, how did this go down? <laughs> So I got the email from my manager, right? And so I don't check my email. So my mom calls me and she goes, she goes like, oh, they want you back for days. And so I'm like, okay, like, wow, like, this is amazing. Like, what, what is the story going to be? So then I finally check my email and my manager is like, yeah, they want you back to play this character, Jerry. And Jerry, like he, um, he's in a, a soap opera and then he's also going to be playing Theo. So then now I'm like, all right, I'm confused, but I'm ready. I'm ready for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so then I get like one of, one of the scripts back and I'm like reading through it. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And it's so funny. Cause it was so confusing. Cause at like, up until I had got to set, I still didn't really know what was going on, but like I had a, like you said, a, a little inkling. So it was actually really, really fun to get, um, as Kim said, to see it unravel like before my eyes. It was very, very fun. And what was really fun is Jerry was very questionable. He's not, he wasn't a good guy and she was swayed. Well, he was blackmailed, right? Mm -hmm. she, did, she did blackmail him, right? Mm -hmm. But it was kind of questionable that he even went along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but the funniest thing ever was James watching the credits of the of Body and Soul, <laughs> and I died. I literally was spit like I was drinking an iced tea, and I like spit. <laughs> there was like Tucker McCall, all the cast, all these inside jokes of the cast, and then it was Jerry Prentice's da da da. And he's like Theo, and then she comes in and goes, "Oh yeah." She's like, you know, before he went to South Africa, he was an actor too. And he's like, what? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was me reading the script. <laughs> did you, did you guys, but I was, uh, Kim was saying you got the giggles out before, but were there not moments through this that you did not, you oh, could not get through it? There, there were some pretty uh, funny moments there. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you, when you, you got to laugh. I mean, we moved really fast so there's not a lot of time to uh get to kind of take it. i mean years ago we used to i think i don't know if terrell remembers but we used to actually use uh, one or two of the earlier rehearsals and uh and kind of laugh through it and get through it and that was a great way to uh sort of get that out of the way we're done we're ready. now you kind of have to do it there in the moment yeah uh, we're oh you can't suppress it so Yep. We top top. Yeah, we go. <laughs> and but Kim, action. But Kim, you were yes. probably like, what did I get myself into? It this was is awful. So fast. It was awful for me. And to watch the shows now, I can tell when I finally got my sea legs, so to speak, um, or, you know, my sand legs, the sands for the sands of time. It was really rough. I was like, what do you mean? There's no time to rehearse. And the other thing too, is that, you know, we're all wearing masks, you know, we were still heavy under COVID rules. Right. So there's mask. And, and if I wanted to rehearse with James and I, you know, I invited James to my dressing room. It was all very up and up. And the COVID master came and said, you two can't be in the room together. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. We were just rehearsing. <laughs> and so it was really a lot. They moved very fast. And I finally got it. Uh, I got the rhythm to the to the degree that I could. And for me, I love rehearsal. I love playing with my actors and I love um, finding new things. And so I don't know. I don't know if Terrell will remember. There was a line that he said something about the, the word smithereens. I'm going to blow your little, you know, uh, whatever your plan to smithereens. And the word smithereens just made me laugh so hard. And luckily they 
you know, they got the take where I wasn't giggling. So <laughs> yeah. you really rely on your actors to play. Like I, J- James is so good with knowing all of his lines. I'm like, how do you do this? Well, well used to be better. <laughs> no, but I know, but honestly, when I, James, I do know people always said you did know your lines. Oh. He's incredible. I, I used to be uh, uh, better, you know, but yes, I, I was the guy a few years ago who uh, always got everybody else's lines. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much now, but I used to do that. But I have to tell you, you're talking about Terrell and this bad guy, but he, he, I, I, I never saw him. I mean, when I'm looking at a script and looking at what Terrell did, he's such a, he's got such an honest face, you know, that I think the audience actually may kind of sympathize with him. You know, they may just think this guy is not deep down bad because he wants to get out of this. Yeah. And he says he's a nice guy. Like you're hurting this nice guy. All of his family is looking for him. And so his conscious kicked in pretty quickly. And I I thought that was a nice turn for him, really. I was right. Because we wanted to. Right. He had to be the one to do the turn. Like he had to be. Right. Um, Yeah. So when you came back. Did had you Terrell and James had you stayed in touch or were you guys not in touch for ten years or what like happened? I mean it's it's the same in touch as like you know an Instagram story like every once in a <laughs> yes, while which yeah. means like I'm still here yeah. I'm still I'm still yeah. a little a little Twitter a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah a retweet here and there it's the actor's life you know you <laughs> you live together for a while and then you go back. To your life and then hopefully you can stay at least lightly lightly in touch over that you know i wish i over the years there have been so many i'm sure kim can understand this there's been so many people that you're in touch with and you form these close bonds you know you go off on a film on location and you get you know very close but then you go home and the world becomes a different place all of a sudden yeah kim what is whitley's problem I am still not understanding what it do we know? Will we find out what is the deep rooted problem? Like I'm watching this story going, what is her deal? I can't tell. I'm sure I can't tell yet. Um, she's not a bad person. In fact, there's a whole scene where, you know, Eli says she's got a good record. She's a good nurse. She's, you know, well liked. There's there's a psychotic break. There's something that happened that caused her to have this break. And she saw this opportunity when this wonderful, sweet man that she's already admires, um, you know, rec- looked at her and said, you're my wife, Paulina. It's like, yes, I am your wife. Come, come with me. She just took an eye. And so I don't think she's a bad person. She just had this break and she wanted to protect him. You know, she he, listen, Abe Carver is beloved, beloved. In fact, I've been enjoying watching the memorials, you know, everybody going to the dock and having their moment and crying and saying their kind words. And it's, you know, it's a testament to Abe Carver. It's a testament to who James Reynolds is. I mean, everyone who I told I was working on the show, like, oh my goodness, you must be a delight working with James Reynolds. I said, you have no idea. And so, um, so you, you'll see that there's a break. Something happened to cause this break, and she's not a bad person. Okay, it, but it's not a. Re- is it a revenge plot against the real Paulina, perhaps? Well, maybe, maybe. Kim Coles has a revenge plot. You know, when I saw, when I called Jack A and said I'm coming on your show, she was like, I can't wait to play with you. I can't wait to smack you or whatever's going to happen. So I won't reveal whether it is a revenge uh, plot against. Applauding, but Jack A and I have fun together too. That's right. I mean. And I mean, everybody was waiting to see Jack A and you together. I mean, like that was like the 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 whole thing. I can I don't know if I can reveal that one of our scenes involved a stunt coordinator. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. That's all you need to know. Okay. So body and soul. I want to know, James, you are watching or supposedly mm. watching this soap opera. What did you think when you saw like Lauren Coslow as Lauren, like all these different people? <laughs> were you not? What happened? You weren't there when they, well, you were in the soap opera too. Well, I, I was in some of the scenes with them. I was actually in some scenes and uh, it was, you know, uh, Abe is, Abe doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> it, it basically, I mean, literally <laughs> the whole thing, he doesn't know what, what's going on. So he's, there's, there's a, a slight, bit of familiarity when he's watching this as if he's seen this these people before but it was also a very 
popular soap opera in Salem, USA, in that part of the world. So a lot of a lot of people watched it, apparently. And uh, so that familiarity could become because he watched them on TV. I mean, you know, you get people who come up to us all the time and they're never quite sure where they saw you, but they saw you someplace. And uh, that's that's the case with uh, with Abe. And he doesn't remember anything anyway. So watching the soap opera becomes life to him. I mean, Whitley's locked him in the place. He can't walk very well. He can walk a little bit, but he can't really walk very well. And uh, this, as with so many fans, um, this is his lifeline. Mm. This becomes his lifeline. He doesn't want it the, in the beginning, but Whit, uh, Whitley pers uh, pers just pursues him to uh, watch this show and he enjoys it. But my head was thinking, Whitley, this is not really, this is Whitley's put together the soap opera and this is telling the story because it's mirroring oh, that's the, the story. Theme. I mean, this is why this is so alternate universe. Why, like, you have to really follow this to get it. Right, right. And I yeah. think a lot of people are confused. About, like, is it her? So is this really a soap opera? Did she put this together? Like, is she's telling it like, no. It's, no a real it's a real soap opera with, and, and I love that they use the actors on this show to play. The, it, it just, you know, it was a treat for me to see, you know, Deirdre Hall turn around with this giant, you know, blonde wig on. And it was just, so, but how clever of the writers to go, we're going to do a show within a show that's going to give him the clues. Uh, and, and also he's a curious man. And weren't you a police officer to begin with? Yes. So there are times yes, you yes. questioned me that I was like, Mm -hmm. I realized that I, I was like, oh, don't forget that he was a cop and he he's he senses that something is off. And so there's all these, you know, complexities happening all at the same time. I mean, and the scene was, where it's revealed that Theo, Terrell, please. Here, here, here. With the giant With bow tie. The, the, just, bow the bow tie, tie was bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> the huge bow tie. It was huge. <laughs> it was so yeah. funny. It was so funny. Yeah. I mean, and when Jerry shows up, you know, when Jerry shows up on the soap, that that gave it its touch of reality mm -hmm. that Jerry had oh. done the show. Right. And I had yeah. forgotten it or else I wouldn't have had him watch. I didn't think about that. Yep. Maybe yeah. I saw him on the show. I was like, I got to hire that actor. Not thinking that my kidnappee is going to see it, and <laughs> get get hip to it. And I'm making the story up as I go along, as you can see. I'm not at all uh, versed in being a criminal or a kidnapper. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, they changed his name before he moved to South Africa. And then when 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 <laughs> well, go to the line about him flying from, uh, was it South America? Yeah. To, yes, to, to Brazil. Well, that, to yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. And he had to go back to, because he forgot his lunch or something. Oh, I don't wow. remember. <laughs> Long layover. It's like we're just making it up as we go along. And there's a yawn that Terrell does, like, oh, I had a really long flight. It's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funniest thing was there was the scene where she leaves. I think he's just there alone with Abe, and she's he's just sitting there, like, because he doesn't he's supposed to be Theo and he has no idea what to say. And it's the most awkward thing. And and Abe is not getting what's going on. So yeah. it was. Mm. <laughs> really, I, 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 I've noticed from the outs because I'm I'm the newcomer in this in this realm in this world is the the fans of this show are so loving and so protective. She better not hurt hurt Abe Carver. She better not mm -hmm. mess with the mayor. Is she trying to steal her man? Like, oh no! It's just you know they're yeah. really protective of you and really protective of wanting to see you get well and get out. And I just fell in love with. I thought that you know. Um, sitcom fans were you know involved in 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 and love I, the soap opera is a whole new world and it's been run, wonderful to be introduced to that yeah so george who's with us on the chat said kim your acting is superb definitely emmy nomination coming in your future mm -hmm. i would love that more than yes it. i said to someone see you at the daytime emmys in 2024 <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that's my plan you know my dream that yes. would be a dream of course and Jazzy, we're we gonna do that. We're we gonna do two ceremonies. Two, I, How are we gonna do that in 2024? We're gonna have two two ceremonies. I, have, the same I don't day? know. My concern is it'll end up being so pushed oh, that yeah, you know, they'll have to. Because the 2023s have been postponed indefinitely, and 
Oh, right. The, the writers right. aren't going home right now. So no. we are on strike. Are we on strike today? We're on strike today. Right? I think tonight. I think tonight. it's July 12th. But yeah. I understood the soap actors that are working on daytime are on a different contract. Yes. And, yeah. Right. So, but Kim, you can strike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> unless they write me back in, I would never cross the yes. picket line. I would never cross the picket line. But uh, yeah, Whitley's on parole. <laughs> well, that'd be a new soap opera, Whitley on parole. Um, Jazzy is saying about Kim. She's deranged on the show. She's talking to her cats. She won't let him out of the apartment. Might say hi. And the stuff cats. And I got to tell you, the first time I walked into that set is when it became real for me. You know, you see what you see on the page and then you walk and it's dusty and it's old. And and he's kind of, you know, like, this is where I live. I don't know. You know like, Stop dissing my place, sir. You know, um, so I, I got a real sense. They create, you know, they have to do it very quickly. They create these worlds so quickly and mm. now i'm watching it as a fan and to watch it on the air you know we you know we went into the set did our thing put our mask back on and went to our room but to see this uh you know come to come to life is so much fun for you it for kim because you're so great at comedy this is really a line between kind of both right yeah. she's got the comic but she's really troubled and I, what you said is she got herself into this kind of right and then she realized oh yeah. my god I got to keep this up or something, right? And then she gets pushed to the to the edge and you'll see that coming soon. You'll see that mm -hmm. coming soon. She gets pushed to the edge. And people like that, I guess they make a decision. We all do that. We get pushed to the edge and then you have a decision to make. Do you go all, the, you know, do you jump over the ledge or do you stop and, you know, say, I'm sorry, you know, what do you do? And we'll see what happens. Yeah. So Terrell coming back, was this really weird? The whole place was the same, right? I mean, so surreal. Everything was like right where I put it, you know? It's so <laughs> wild. Just seeing everybody, it was it was so crazy because I was like, that was one of my big things. I was like, I'm really curious to see what has changed. And I go and I'm like, wow, absolutely nothing. Like this is it, but it was so nice. It felt like home. It felt like home. Was it That's now what good. about the scenes with Cameron Johnson who played Theo and the, like Theo and Jerry? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was it weird for you seeing that there is this Theo and you're not the Theo? And how was I mean, it? I I thought it would be weird, but honestly, it was like it wasn't weird, it was weird at all because first of all, like Cameron had so many questions and he was like really talkative about it. And he was like, So I heard you were like the Theo before me. So it was it was really um it was really fun to be able to do that. He's such a good actor as well. Um so, I mean, it was just like, we were in there and out of there. Like, it was really, really nice. James, when Renee jumped, when they, when they killed Lexi on the show, was Terrell mm -hmm. there with you? Terrell was, it was, uh, yes. Uh, well, he was younger. But, when he was uh, younger. Yeah, yeah but right. he was you, there. I don't think he was in the, in the house at the time. We haven't seen my house for a while. But anyway, he wasn't, uh, I got to tend Le Lexi's grave in the backyard. But, oh, she's in the cemetery. That's right. Uh, right. She died in the backyard. Died but, in the backyard. Um, yeah, in that's the backyard. Right, right. And uh, but, uh, yeah, that 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 forever lives is uh, uh, a sad moment, and uh, I think the audience sees it that way as well. Yeah, they were one, one of those of couples, those eighties, nineties couples for so long. But uh, yeah, he was he was certainly there and around, and I think you were. I think you worked quite a bit during that time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. That was great. It was interesting to see he and Cam together because I, I, that was, uh, you know, Ron, Ron really wrote uh, kind of a humdinger of a story with a lot of lines that crossed and came this way and that way and did this and that. And uh, I think it really is something I, I'm fascinated to know what the audience as a whole feels about that show and how engaged hopefully they were, because I think it's one of the more complicated storylines that we've had on the show. It is. And I think that's one of the reasons I was so glad to have you because there's been a lot of confusion of like, yes. it's hard, you know, for a fan, sometimes they just, they can poo poo it because they're like, I can't even follow this. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's so, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, what is this crazy? Like, what is this? But when you actually break it down, it is so clever. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. so oh, clever. Right. Like, a, it's yeah. a Ron clever. It's this very, very, very clever. It's almost yes. like it's art. You got to follow it. 
And it's yeah. well, it had a lot of elements too. You know, it was a thriller. It was a, a surrealist piece. Mm-hmm. It was a fantasy. Mm-hmm. And it was soap opera. I mean, all those things came together and you don't really, you usually have that. The plots are pretty straightforward. And I know people talk about slow plots all the time, but they're, you know, they're pretty, somebody's pregnant or they're not, or they're after somebody or they kidnap somebody or, but this one had so many different elements. And I thought in covering everything for 40 years, like I had seen it all. <laughs> and I'm watching this going, even like I was saying, Kim, I was like, wait, what's going on? Like, I'm trying to piece it together. Um, but it has been fascinating. Do you remember Terrell working with Renee Jones and, mm. and James mm. back then? What did you, did you think they were any good? Oh, um, <laughs> they were all right. I mean, you get what you get. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought you were going to grow up to be a Olivia. you had. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I, I do remember that. And I, that is one of like, I mean, I think it's it's so crazy because when you look back at like my childhood, that being such a big piece of it is kind of crazy. And having like a like a real TV mom and dad for so long, it's just kind of wild to think about um, looking back. But honestly, that was one of like when I that's one of my the the things that i remember the most is just having so much fun um with lexi and with abe and it's just it, it, it was an incredible you know experience and I yeah, got- we used to play together a little bit when you were when you were young and on the, the uh-huh. set because it used to bother renee a little bit because you'd run up and <laughs> i'd grab you and See, I'm here. <laughs> I remember coming out. I was telling, I remember kind of like, hi, I'm Michael. And he's like, I'm Darrell. You know, and he was literally eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Which speaks, Kim, to Amazing. like this whole thing about generational and the show and, and how we're all this connected family. And one of the things I've always talked to James about is that, you know, we are a family. The fans are a family and part of this whole thing. It's in a weird way that sitcoms or primetime drama or movies, you don't have that kind of, it's a very different um, feeling, f- mm. like family feeling. I've got Ron DeLay is saying, Kim, I'm living single, we loved. Well, I'll say this. If if you happen to last a while on a sitcom, you do have family. You know, you have family with the cast and family with with your with your fans. It depends on the length of time. You know, I think that's what causes the, in, in my opinion, on a soap opera, um, because you're with these characters for so long that you get, yeah. you do feel as if they're family. And I think if a sitcom lasts a while, you do have that experience because I have, I do feel like I have that at least with Living Single for sure. Um, what was it like to be part of Living Single? I mean, um, everybody knows you from Living Single. What was that experience like? Yeah. I always call it the sparkling jewel of my career. Now, do I want some more sparkling jewels? Yes, I do. <laughs> it was one of the most experienced, one of the best experiences ever. Um, and uh, we, you know, we, we, we became family. We laughed together. We t- I'm still friends with all of my castmates. Um, and um, we created something that hadn't been done before. It was the first African-American woman to, you know, write and, executive produce a sitcom and so it was all of that goodness and juxtaposed you know with what was happening at friends with friends at the same time which was also on Warner Brothers and so you know trying to get noticed and seen and get our due and 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 just do funny great funny work and so um yeah it was it was great it was great and, and, and I miss, you know, I, I'll say this too. I love a multi-camera experience. So although the sitcom, the soap opera world of learning all those lines was tough, I felt at home because there were four cameras going on. I'm like, and there's the boom. Okay, I'm home. And so it's like they're catching all of it all at the same time. Although it's different, it's similar. And so it felt um, uh, real to me. And they're a family, you know? They're absolutely a family. Yeah. I watched them be happy to see Terrell. You know, the camera guys go, I remember, hey, that's the kid. You know, so that's, it's it's required in order to make it work, I think. And um, James, you had seen, obviously, Kim's work through her career. Oh, yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt, yes. First time I met her. I thought, oh, yeah, man. we met. I, I, I did a show at his theater. Yeah. The Fremont Theater. Yes. Yeah. We're so happy to have her and, and hopefully... I'd love to come back again. <laughs> what, would, 
Oh, but wait, there's more. That's Hopefully. the name of the show. I'd love to come back. It's such yeah. a good show. So, yeah. Well, there is more now. So, you've, you've got to talk, talk about being on daytime TV. Right. <laughs> resurrect body and soul at the Fremont Theater. Please. <laughs> there you go. So, high camp. And so, what year was Maybe. Body and Soul shot? Was it the 80s or the 90s? What was what, what was the setting, the, the time because setting? Because Jerry was on it, I assume it has to be the 90s. 90s, oh, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Terrell, or is it, would it be be the two thousands? Wouldn't it so, be the two thousands uh, for you? I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> 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 that kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Melissa yeah. in the chat says, "Ms. Coles, I have to say, I was thrilled to hear you joining the cast of Days. Mm-hmm. I've been a fan of yours since Living Single. I still watch repeats of the show. Lots thank of you. laughs. Thank you. I get those residual checks, so thank you. Keep it keep it flowing." <laughs> and Melissa also asked you, Mr. Reynolds, what is it like having scenes with both the amazing Jack A. Harry and Kim Coles? Well, that was something I was really looking forward to. I was I was really really looking forward to that and uh i'll let all of you judge what happens as we all meet up at some yeah. point and maybe we have already but anyway very soon and um I, I you know i was just thrilled and sometimes you just want to watch and mm-hmm. i was uh i was very excited also both are just wonderful people to work with that's that that's kind of the way i judge the experience is how are these good people and are these wonderful professionals and they are both both great people and just tremendous professionals can i give you a little a little inside though i i cannot lie that i knocked on jack a's door and went in you know hopefully the covid you know the covid you know monitor wasn't around <laughs> and i was like girl what is this she said girl good luck I was like, how do you do your lines? I don't know, girl. You're on your own, girl. I was like, what are you doing here? I said, girl, I still have a hard time with it. Good luck. And I was like, okay, I got to hope before they come and get me out here. So we did have that moment of, I was like, what are we doing here? So I don't, I stood out now, girl. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's often. a challenge. Yeah, it's, but to, to, to Jackie's point and James and all, you know, I've seen a lot of actors and actresses who've come from primetime or film and they do a soap role. And like you said, Kim, they're thrown for, it's like, you, it's kind of like you have to sink or swim. And they have to like, how do I wrap my head around it? Cause it is so different than shooting a primetime show, a sitcom or a drama. So when, when, you know, when I started, I was on, uh, uh, one of the things I was always happy to see people I grew up watching. Uh, this is when I started. So people growing up watching me now, but um, I always love that. But you would be amazed at the names who were substantial nighttime names or fit or movie movie names, people that I admired then and I still do. They were just half of them wanted to walk out. Half of them really wanted to leave before the day. They didn't. They wanted to. And uh, so uh, for Kim to come in the way that we do it now, and that was in the days when we had time. You know, we'd have about three rehearsals before we shot the show. Kim's uh, like, why wasn't I, I, I out long for those days? Yeah. But Kim, uh, this, what she did in the new time where you have about 10 seconds to uh, to figure it out is was extraordinary. But can I tell you something else, too? I learned in this experience that, you know, after meeting Deirdre Hall and I, you know, got a chance to say hello to Susan C. Forth Hayes. I understand that this world keeps your mind sharp. Like James mm-hmm. is sharp. Deirdre is sharp. They're sharp because you have so many lines to learn. You move so quickly. And I think that that is a, a youth elixir that nobody knows about. The youth elixir, the secret to youth is to book get get booked on a soap opera because <laughs> there's a, you know your mind has to stay young and, and pliable because there's so much happening and um and so much that you have to memorize and act and and care for each other. And I was really impressed with 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 that that i was like oh hire me again so i can stay young up here i don't know what's going to happen here but i know here i can stay young uh because you the more you use your mind the more you can stay young so i was really impressed with that yeah i was going to ask you about terrell working with um sal stowers and james having sal back was so nice and of course what was it like working with sal terrell you had not worked with her before obviously and this is you know his. I mean, it was 
it's so cool because it's like you see these people especially when i was younger i would see these people in passing like all the time and like never get to do scenes with them so then coming back and be able to do that was actually like really really fun i was like i remember you i used to see you in the cafeteria like it was so so much fun and honestly like like i like i said um no matter if i did scenes with someone uh back then or not literally it just felt like such a, a coming back to a family and having everybody like recognize me and remember remember me and they would say like they saw me on my call sheet and they were like oh my god no way he's back you you're you're a grown man and you're so attractive and like cool now so like just getting that it was uh was, was so, they like so, wait you're playing jerry prentice were they not like <laughs> right? going on who's jerry prentice yeah. like what it's so crazy it's so crazy because they would ask me like so 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 like why are you back like who are you playing i would be like you know what i don't know today um but <laughs> but yeah it was it was so much fun really did you so not much laugh fun. in the scenes with lauren coslow playing i i was it was so funny because I remember we had, um, I don't remember exactly like what the lines were, but it was just like the way that she was like just flowing along the scene, had everybody like every, once we had wrapped, just like the whole um, whole set had just like lit up and you could you could hear just chuckles here and there. It was so good, so good. And and James, what was it like having Sal home for a little bit? Oh, it's always, it's always wonderful. One of the things I was gonna, going to say, uh, with Terrell, it's there's so much more diversity on the show than there used to be when he was there. Basically, the diversity in those days consisted of him, me, and Renee. <laughs> that was it. That was and, it. Uh, so it. now yeah. it's a much more diverse show, not only with with uh, black actors, but we have Hispanic actors and Asian actors now, and it's it's a, I think a much richer tapestry than it used to be. And so that's that's a that's a big change. And, you know, it, it, one thing that hasn't changed, though, in all those years, it's all these are nice people. They're mm -hmm. all really nice people. And you enjoy seeing them and you enjoy working with them. And that's from, you know, Deidre and me and Drake, who've been there for 100 years to, uh, you know, everybody else has just come in last week. It's and, a, and a and nice I think I can, I can, like, attest to that is that that's one thing that I really noticed because I feel like sometimes even in like single camera, you have some actors that you work with that are just like, okay, we have all this time, but like, they're not really trying to get to know you at all. But like, even though like we're chop, 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 like you have 30 seconds between you before you're going through the next scene, like even the people that I haven't met before, always were asking me questions about myself in between and like asking like how I was. And that's something you you really notice because like that doesn't happen all the time. And so for everyone who works on the show to be like that and be so welcoming, it's like you you really, really do notice that. I feel like that's also why um, I would consider like the show like a, a family, you know? So Kim, who gave you the most advice? Jack A? Like who helped you most when you got there with the nutsiness of this whole thing? Of this bit? James Reynolds. Oh, James Reynolds, I would ask nice a question or two, and he's like, you're doing, I said, I don't know, did they take that take? They, I want to do it again. He says, no, it's <laughs> no, they're rolling the whole time. We have no time. The whole time. Uh, he was very kind, very um, uh, welcoming. Um, we, we, then we had that moment. It was like, oh, yeah, I did work with you. I, I came and did a show at the theater. So that was another beautiful way to connect and just couldn't have been kinder. And, and this, oh, well, here's the good news. I'd already heard the, you know, heard the good news i had spoken to jackie on the phone she said oh you're gonna love jack oh he's wonderful oh he's one he's so kind he's a doll and then somebody else said oh you're gonna love i think someone in the wardrobe and the hair department they all were telling me that wait till you work with him you're gonna have a good you're gonna be okay because you're gonna be working with him and so to be under his tutelage under his you know being able to act with him um his patience was incredible because i would go up on a line and say no just do it again and if you ad lib it'll be fine just get in the general direction couldn't have been kinder couldn't have been lovelier and james has a great wit so sometimes we would have these little you know th there'd be a play on words and you know, james is really sharp with seeing a, a double entendre or, 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 you know, something that's a little off or a little naughty and he'll say it and get it out of the way. So it's like, now we can go and play. So it was just an absolute delight. And he wears no, great, cowboy boots. great cowboy boots. Great. Cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> the Always. other funny thing is Drake, John is like, I keep, I'm having this dream, this thing with vision of, you know, he sees Abe and 
she's trying to like he, you know he knows something's not right <laughs> and he's yeah. trying to like figure it out because he comes to doesn't Abe come to him or something and he you, you know about that part he kind of like he's trying to figure out why he's seeing Abe and worried about him mm -hmm. and Marlene is thinking she's like well maybe your your dream is really telling you something that he's he's really alive down at the docks you know <laughs> so that's so everybody's looking for Abe basically is that somebody came to Jerry is that one of the people that came to Jerry you're talking about uh no was, there was a scene there's, Terrell, wasn't there was some one of the sequence. there's a dream sequence and you show right. up at the docks is that what you mean yes oh that yes. was with John yes yes they were John, agents of the, the John yes so yes. Kim what is the scene I don't know if we've seen it or not yet but was there a scene that to you is the most memorable where you were like oh my god I cannot either wait to play this or it was the most hard to play um stabbing james reynolds excuse me stabbing a stabbing abe carver in the neck with a <laughs> with a, uh, you know with a needle was uh was har harrowing for me even though they kept showing me no 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 it doesn't even retract it bends it, uh, maybe i shouldn't be giving it giving it away oh yes that has aired already yeah, and we saw it. we've seen it multiple yes. times yes stab him and go you're not going anywhere darling that was hard for me because i didn't want to hurt him um i didn't want to you know because i yeah i that was that was both memorable and and wonderful and also the marriage scene when i, I insisted that we get married again <laughs> and lined up all the kitty cats to be you know the officiant and the attendees and you know really did the wedding march towards him I in the giant church hat just that was everything and, and they explained this all to you James from the beginning like he was gonna yeah, wake no, up Albert came people, to me you knew like the arc of this not, not the not the entire uh the entire arc but I knew what was going to happen and he had mentioned the amnesia and I told him that I, I think I played every other the of the soap stereotypes <laughs> except <laughs> except amnesia, amnesia and i've lost my sense of speech and my sense of sight and all kinds of things but um uh so i knew what was going on but in the actual playing of it it becomes something a little bit different because you're you know you don't remember and other things are going on with you physically that you don't know and there were times when abe was rather comfortable with Whitley you know to the fact that he was here and maybe there's something to this and maybe I should you know sit and watch the show quietly and talk about whatever a married couple might talk about and then there was an uh there were those times which was frequent when he had to figure it out and he he knew that something was wrong and he tried to figure it out so you always have these these things going on in your mind you know what's what's the quandary now I know there's something happening and she doesn't it doesn't she I think she's my wife I'm not sure she looks a little you know so it was great for me anyway great fun to do all of that and I hope it's I hope it's coming across that uh you know it's a real it's a real moment of uh a, a lot of things indecisions and quandary and being comfortable not being comfortable all of that so I don't know. Did, did they ever sleep in bed together? I mean, I know they didn't have sex, I was, but I was, did they ever sleep in the same bed? Did they I have sex together? I don't think so. I just raised my hand. No, to, I don't think so either. To note that slept on the couch. They protected your character so well because he because he was unsure early on at least he said i can't sleep with you uh, and so she made up that awful sofa i'd like to apologize for your back now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that. It wasn't good. I love that uh, that they protected you in that way, that you're not cheating on your real wife with this woman. I don't think they actually ever had sex. And I don't think that's what she even wanted. She just wanted someone to care for yep. and wanted someone. Right. To, I think it kept it was kept innocent in that way. And I really appreciated that. So I don't know what yeah. happened going on, but I hope that Paulina doesn't say to you, you know, did you did you lay with that woman? Uh, you know, I don't know what they, but I yeah. feel that they protected Abe Carver, Carver in that way. They lane together. Lane no. together. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think Jerry Prentice has gone or will be, or do will we see that's him again? Question. Do you think Jerry Prentice? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a great question. You know, I, I, 
feel like I'm in the same position as the viewers. Like, I, I just can't wait to see what happens next. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Mm -hmm. I think Jerry got oh, let, good. Me ask, <laughs> let me ask you this, Terrell. If there was a well, and I don't know what happens, I'm not gonna, but if he leaves the canvas, would you want to come back as Jerry? Oh, I feel like in like 10 years, I'll come back as like who who knows? Who oh, knows? Just keeps coming <laughs> yeah, I I want to be the story. Like, Every so decade of your time. life, right? <laughs> the sands of time <laughs> um so uh, there is a question here uh do you guys keep in touch with renee jones at all james or terrell have you i i uh text renee now and then but she's she is hard to, to reach yeah. so i hope she sees this and, and text me renee text me <laughs> <laughs> yeah very very hard to keep in touch but she's always off the grid yeah. Yeah. Um, Candace is asking, just saying, I want to say I like the storyline. It's a different take on the typical memory loss storyline. It went from interesting to, oh my gosh, she's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree, Kim, on that? I agree. I concur. Now, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm done. I, just n a little nuts. Yeah. I wanted to know, Kim and Terrell and James, your family in real life people in your real life are they watching this story and what mm -hmm. is their reaction to this story yeah um Paula, so, Kim and Darrell yeah. answer first so my mother who's 93 is still trying to figure out peacock so oh. we remember, <laughs> and I go ma don't worry it's streaming you can catch from the beginning so as soon as I, I'm actually I, she lives in North Carolina I'm going to go visit her set it up and just set it up and make her watch from the very beginning so because it, it would be fun to track it all you know without having to wait for the episodes so uh there's that and I do have friends who are like how did you do that what did you do how, have you taken that man did you take Jack Ace it's not Jack Ace Paulina come on <laughs> so, <laughs> and people are like some people are laughing at the wig uh you know, so varying, but all supportive. And, 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 and the best part is people saying, of course you can do soap opera. Why did you, I shunned, I was like, no, thank you. I told my agent, whatever you do, don't send me a soap opera. And this came up. And so the support I'm also getting is the, the, the idea of taking on a challenge and saying yes to it and how that can change your life. Mm -hmm. And so friends are very supportive of that. And that's good. You know, it has nothing to do with, with the job. It has everything to do with taking on a challenge and going, I'm going to give this a try. And there's mm -hmm. so much support there that um, you're set up to win. All you have to do is show up and, and be willing to do the work. So that was good. Yeah. Well, what about you? What did my mom and my grandmother, they're, they're keeping up with it. They love it. <laughs> they love it. I remember my mom. I would I would come back from filming and my mom would call me and she'd be like, so what happened next? And I'd be like, you'll never guess. So this is what happens. And so now she finally gets to see it play out on the screen. And she's calling me, telling me that I did such a good job. And so it's it, it's been nice. Yeah. His mom's great. And she used to be on the set all the time. And it's, yes. Yeah, she's wonderful. And Lisa, what's your wife saying about this, James? Well, she loves it. She loves this. You know, she's always on top of everything. I, know a lot of people follow her Instagram uh, a lot. She's the one that does it, by the way. And <laughs> they think they're talking to me sometimes. But I think a lot of them know they're talking to Lisa. And we just got back from Europe. And um, I was amazed. We went to Amsterdam and London. And, you know, because it, it's not over the air necessarily or even on cable. It's, it's uh, on apps. And uh, so I was shocked uh, at the number of people that had watched the show a lot. Uh, many were Americans, but some in Holland were Dutch and in England were Brits. And um, I was very surprised and very, very pleased at that because, you know, once you're once you go to that streaming thing, you're not really sure who's uh, watching. The network was a different response than you get now. But, man, I I thought this is wonderful walking down, you know, my wooden shoes in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now here's, this is interesting. Odessa is saying, mention that single tear of Abe's. You had a single tear coming yeah. down in that scene. She is, didn't she inject you at like, and you're just one tear? She injected me in my eye. No, she didn't. 
Uh, <laughs> right. And and you, Kim, that was pretty, right? You were and like, I had not read the scene. You know, I didn't read the other scenes because Whitley would not know what was going on other than Abe Carver's been taken. She would understand the news, but not know what these other characters are doing. So to put those two stories together that, you know, I sat here with my husband and he was watching the fireworks and there was one single tear and then to cut to a year, you know, how, however many, a year later. And I've drugged you. And there you are, that single tear, my heart. Oh, I almost wanted to send you home in that moment. <laughs> I felt so bad. Yeah. Make, that sure, that you, make sure you get that Emmy. No, nah, man, because you should be the guest star. You know, there is a guest star Emmy. Yeah, and, I'm going to. Uh, you that, think that, I'm going to get my yeah, We have this on our list. You know, seriously, <laughs> yeah. you have to do that. I would love to. I'd be honored. You have, yeah. you have to do that. I think you might have that locked up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there are people saying, please tell Jim. Oh, yeah. He's saying, please tell James a single tear was amazing. I felt so bad after that. He looked helpless. See, that was the turn. When I we saw that, we were like, you know, it was shocking. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, no, poor A. You know, it was already bad. But it got it got bad. Then there's another person, Candace, says, I think Abe is a reminder of Whitley's dead husband. Or she is nuts about him looking like her favorite character on Body and Soul. Mm. Those are some theories. Well. He, might, he might remind me <laughs> of my husband. He might. Uh, mm, very good. Very yeah, astute. We never saw the picture very of your dad. Very astute, dead, Candace. I never, yeah. saw, never saw it. I'm going to run to the restroom. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed afraid. to be me. I'm the old man. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> the old <laughs> man. Um, so you like those? Those are good theories. See, that's the thing about this. It's caused people to have to think, like, what is really going on? Because I'm not playing it like I'm a vamp or 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 um, that I'm stealing, you know, Paulina's man. And you know, there's there's definitely moments where I'm going to see her and check on her. I'm, you know, I see her in the hospital for heaven's sake. I go to her apartment to check on her, um, which, you know, will escalate her feelings at some point, as you can imagine. So um yeah, I I, I think the turn has the turn the the, the tables or the, the the page has turned for sure. So we'll see what's going to happen. James, and, and Ripley, maybe people may think she's a little nuts, but she's, uh, I think, uh, a very sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. I think Whitley is a really sympathetic character, even though, you know, she's she's off balance, no doubt about that. But <laughs> but uh, you, you look at her and you go, oh, man, what drove her to this? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But also we're like, I, I, there's the moments when it's so frustrating because you think that Abe is finally getting his wits about him mm -hmm. and she's drugging him. Mm -hmm. So that's what's so awful. That's the misery. That's that horrible yeah. part of it. And James, where does this stack up in your storylines that you've done over the years on Days? You haven't done this exactly. And then this, I, I've done uh, a few things. Um, it's right up there, you know, uh, obviously back in the times with uh, Brandon and Alexi, those were, those were uh, uh, heavy duty stories. This is, this is, right up there uh the the story with with theo uh that uh when theo was shot and uh we, we thought dying that's another one and uh there have been a few but this one's this one's top might be top three certainly top five nice that's good that's good yeah. so you've got a few other things going on don't you have another show right now is there a bt show or something you were doing no uh i had i thought i had one but uh uh i don't think it's been i don't think it's been properly okay, <laughs> properly kim. sold i won't say any more about that but okay, uh okay. not not currently kim are you in another were you doing another show recently i was doing a show on bounce but that's bounced away <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so no, not another show, but I've got a whole other side of my business where I coach entrepreneurs about storytelling. And so to oh, really? come in here and see that, yeah, I'm, I, I coach storytelling mm. and um, how to be captivating on camera and how to captivate your, I call it captivate your clients just by being you. And so helping people to bring forth their own gifts and talents and and share them with the world. And so to now have a new aspect for understanding how story flows and goes and how it um, uh, draws people in and, and has people uh, uh, react uh, has been a, a, you know, a new element that I'm certainly going to 
add to some of my programs. Is that for non non artists, non actors, non writers? Is that something that Anybody? business people or lawyers yeah. can Absolutely. come in and? In fact, I, oh, I cater to. I should, I should say most of my clients are entrepreneurs, business owners, um, coaches themselves, speakers, authors. Um, I have a whole book writing program, and so to learn, you know, there's you know there's always the hero's journey at the core of all of it, right? For each of us, uh, for ourselves, uh, and also for the way that we share our talents with others and help others. So I'm teaching people how they can teach people and help people in that way. So that's, that's wonderful. That's fun. And so now to have, like I said, this new um, soap opera, uh, the soap opera jewels, because there's a, you know, I, I learned a formula that I didn't know about, you know, when I watch the show, I can watch the first, the, I don't know if you call them teasers. I forget what you call them on the show. Once they edit the show, the first three scenes will dictate what's going to happen the rest of the show. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. And that's like in a sitcom. That's like in, you know, many um, shows, the previews of what's to happen. And can I also say that I thought that, so we here we were in our world doing our thing, you know, Jerry and Abe and I, and I would look on the monitors when I was in the makeup room or something and look at the Demera mansion. I'll go, wow, that story looks like it's so intense and rich and important and amazing. And I'm just doing this thing with these silly cats and stabbing people in the, <laughs> you know, hiring people to black, you know, blackmailing <laughs> and to watch the show now and go like, that's just as over the top and wonderful. And people are kidnapping. I'm like, Oh, I get it now. I get it now that it's a, yeah. uh, fantasy and surreal, like you said, James, and, um, and, a, and a great escape for some people. And, and it's wonderful. We talk about your workshop. That's, uh, that's worth the evening. At the theater. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> evening at the theater. That sounds great. All that. Terrell, what's going on with you? We were talking a little bit, your, what you're doing in your life, right? What's mm, going on? I mean, I mean, I, I've, since then, I mean, I've been just giving myself, I've been given the time to like work on my other things creatively, as we talked about, you know, like, like music and things like I'm really starting to pick that back up. Uh, that's one of my biggest passions, I think, right now. And then honestly, just figuring out what I want to do with my life. I'm out of school right now. So then I'm doing a little bit of writing, like everything, everything. I want this whole like hub of just creativity. And I feel like that's that's what I can take advantage of um right now with the time that i have so yeah awesome uh brian is don't asking, forget to give kim and i a job when you are when you're running a studio. <laughs> I, you guys <laughs> are gonna be <laughs> <laughs> me too um brian is asking james can you give any memories of the late joe muscolo oh gosh yes in fact joe was actually in my dreams the other night which is kind of interesting we uh, yeah joe and i were, were were friends and uh and uh, he's missed and he's missed by uh, a great many people i think a lot of fans still the centerpiece of the show in many ways you know we still it's still stefano is behind a lot of stuff that goes great on <laughs> you know he's been gone for a while but stefano's still pulling some strings so still having children i don't know how that works <laughs> but uh <laughs> somehow it works uh joe joe was, was something else he was uh, he was a character not only a, a wonderful actor but he had that as you know this tremendous presence to him the physical presence you know he's he was a big man with that that great voice and um uh you know always had his sense of confidence in who he was and what he wanted to do and uh it was really he was he was a fascinating guy and i know what we used to have the uh days of day of days at universal and the bar was open at seven in the morning and joe would always come to me let's have a drink i said joe I, i'm not I can't have that. <laughs> joe, i just got out of bed i'm not having a drink <laughs> and he, you know but joe's got his his double scotch or whatever he has and uh you know he was he was fine he was he was in his element and uh, certainly around the fans who loved him and it just shows that when you play a villain which i would you know love to do and uh, somebody else was talking about that the other day, loving to play a villain. Uh, we, we always have to remember that the best villains are charming villains. Mm -hmm. And Stefano was a charming villain. Yeah. I loved Joe so much. When I, when I would come over to Days to interview him, he would go, who let you in here? 
<laughs> I called him security guard. Like it was always a funny joke over the years of like who let you in here. Um, but he always had the greatest hugs, and he was a really sweet. Yes, he was a sweet, very sweet man. man. Really sweet very man. Sweet man. Um, Odessa saying about Abe keeps telling Whitley everything he suspects. He needs to stop telling Whitley everything. She has an answer <laughs> for everything. <laughs> Hey, doesn't remember the damn thing. So he, <laughs> he's like telling her everything. You gotta get it. Out. Okay, well, I better, right? I mean, she's. Yeah. He's but getting... it's also a way of getting information from Whitley. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get information as well, and you know that's one of the lines that I, uh, I had a great deal, a great deal of fun playing because there's lots, there's a lot going on in in Abe's somewhat now partially empty head, uh, but there's there's other stuff going on. Um, they're asking me, uh, Randy is asking, can you please ask Terrell if he's still in touch with Lauren Bowles, who played Sierra while he played Theo? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. Um, uh, I remember when she had graduated, I, I sent her like a little message. I mean, like I said, Instagram and like social media is the best way to keep in touch with someone now, um, which is crazy. So I'm always like seeing her post and uh, making sure to like and like every once in a while leave a comment and she's out there doing such big things now which is so insane to see so yeah help me for life oh, for life. Great. <laughs> yeah, so, so kim in a in a tease i know i i will tell everybody that not to miss thursday and friday's episodes of days there's some major stuff about to happen mm-hmm. in the story with these three, that I will say. Kim, in a broad stroke, what should the fans look forward to from where we are now to? Just know that the stunt coordinator was called in for some of these scenes as well. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I had three appointments with the with the uh, stunt coordinator. Well, you know, what you know is, you know, Whitley begins to see that and, and understand that, this is this can't end well so we got to desperate times call for desperate measures that's the answer desperate times call for desperate measures tune in thursday and friday you got yourself right (laughs) yeah terrell so what would you say about jerry now he's obviously given up this information that he is he's he he kind he really likes abe right yeah Ron, Mm -hmm. what's his deal? He's fond of Abe now at this point? Honestly, I think the the biggest like thing that I had with this character and one of the most fun things to play because I haven't done this before is someone who in every scene is going through some type of like self conflict and is feeling conflicted about everything. And so I think my character arc here isn't going from a bad guy to a good guy. It's going from someone who is scared to make a decision to someone who goes, okay, I'm going to make a decision. And I feel like that was his character arc. So just conflict, constant conflict. Constant conflict. All right, mm-hmm. James. We've got constant conflict and desperate measures. That's yeah. Right, yeah. James, <laughs> now, James, now in terms of you, for, for Abe to preview, you are telling us though, this is not the end for him. Like he still can't remember what's going on. Like, are we going to, no, you know, I, I think uh, the, uh, you know, the audience, uh, I don't think it, maybe I shouldn't say anything, but I already have. Uh, the, <laughs> um, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. And, uh, and I think there's some interesting things coming down the pike, to be honest, I'm not sure what they are, but um, this is not a, this is not an injury that is going to go away right away. And I look forward to to exploring what's what will happen down the road uh, in the immediate future. He's he will, you know, he, he, he struggles less, but he will. Um, he's certainly there. It's it's there. I mean, I have I have nagging injuries from various episodes of my life, which has brought me in contact with violence and uh, they still hurt. And uh, so it's hard to shake those things. And you don't think that this is a psychological amnesia? This is a real, like, do you think it's all, do you think it's like? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Call Ron. 
<laughs> I am. I am. I actually am. Ron, is this psychological? I don't know. It's That's like interesting. Be an interesting right? Thing to play. Right. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of yeah. times trauma to the brain or amnesia, a lot of times in soaps too, they're like, oh, yeah. he's not really physical. He's really suffering because he doesn't want to remember this, you know, or they, yeah. they all sorts of reasons they bring up why somebody has amnesia to further the story or keep it going. Yeah, well, that okay, could be. Well, a, I'm worried now you know. about Abe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, uh, many good things about Ron and what he does and how he places stories and uh, organizes them is that you don't uh, it, things have a payoff down the road uh, often often way down the road often a little bit closer and uh, that's an interesting thing for characters and actors to be able to play that and you want to bring that I you know try to bring some of it into what's going on at the moment but there are, there will be other challenges uh, in the future not necessarily dealing with Abe and his memory, but things that will challenge a lot of people in, uh, you know, in his arc, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm just clearly Melissa said, I love Nurse Whitley. Hopefully she gets the help she needs and comes back after she does, because I want you to stay on days. Oh, that is the sweetest thing. And yeah. even as we speak, I'm moving. And it so happens I'm moving to Burbank about six minutes away from the studio. So that would work <laughs> out nicely for me. I, it would be right up the street. Out. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So that I great. would be delighted to come back and, and desi- delighted to play and delighted to walk down. It's a very long hallway that's there, you know, or maybe they it just is. put it in the furthest uh, dressing room because I was the newest. Um, <laughs> but I really loved walking up and down that hallway and watching the magic happen. And to be in the s- same studios as so much television magic happening yeah. uh, was really magical for me. So, yeah. Melissa, thank you also for your um, comment about my song, Better Late Than Ever. I saw it. I'm so glad you love it. Thank you very oh. much. You guys... This has been so much fun. I cannot believe, I really wanted to get us all together. Um, It was really, really great. It's such an interesting story and crazy. And I think people like you see are having their own theories of what is going on. Um, But it's been really, really unique. Terrell, my gosh, so nice to see you again. So many years have gone (laughs) by. We're getting so old. What's happening? But um, <laughs> yeah, it's really great to see you, Kim. Really wonderful, wonderful work. I mean, as James says, like you have to submit yourself for the Emmy. It's been great. One hundred percent. I'm gonna do that. I'll be wearing a sparkly dress and long, long lashes. <laughs> there you go. There, there you, you go. go, James. It's always <laughs> wonderful to see you. Really nice. You too, to see Michael. You, you too. And, you and Michael. Watch them on Peacock on Days of Our Lives weekdays watch the next couple episodes and on after that thank okay. you michael thank right. you bye. Yes. Bye. keep watching bye <laughs> bye michael guys, take care you. hey drill